High res is the buzzword in the audio world with lots of discussions about the audibility. Here are five things you should know about high res audio. High res audio was started by Sony and Philips when they introduced SACD. Other major record companies followed by introducing DVD audio. Both standards failed to get a broad market acceptation. Only the smaller audiophile labels kept producing these formats, predominantly SACD. Active audiophiles started to rip these high res discs to files to be able to play them on their network players. When the audiophile labels started to offer download purchases in high res, the big labels joined in carefully. Recently MQA came to market, making it easier to stream and download high res files. But be aware, high res is not always what you think it is. High res has now been defined by trade organizations as anything that has higher resolution than CD. This means that, according to this definition, 48 kHz 20 bit files are already high res and are allowed to carry the high res logo. High res audio can be stored in WAV, Apple Lossless, FLAC, AIF, DFF and DSF file formats. Streaming services like Cobus and Tidal that stream losslessly compressed CD quality files are sometimes also called high res since they provide higher quality than MP3 files that usually are provided by streaming services. Not all high res files contain true high res music. Unfortunately, there are companies that think they can fool the public by upsampling CD quality files to higher sampling rates or to DSD. That also happened when SACD and DVDA was introduced. I have been to a demo on the AES convention in Munich where an SACD was played that was recorded on 48 kHz 16 bit. They even admitted this and were surprised that I could hear that. The Digital Entertainment Group, together with the Consumer Electronics Association and the Recording Academy, has defined four categories of audio files. MQP is produced from a PCM master source at 48 kHz 20 bit or higher. MQA is produced from an analog master tape. MQC is from a CD master source, thus 44.1 16-bit kHz and MQD that is produced from a DSD or DSF master source. Whether this will work is questionable as we have seen in the previous item. Can you hear the difference? Well that depends. Playing high res music in a noisy spot like a car train or outdoors in the city might not pay off sufficiently. Strangely enough, high res music can pay off significantly when played at well designed budget stereo equipment like my set 3, see the link in the top right corner, while the difference is smaller in my set 1. The Shannon Nyquist theorems prove that 44.1 kHz sampled signal in theory will store all audio information up to 22.05 kHz, but Nyquist published his theorem in 1930 when technology was far from able to implement this, this idea. The first implementations came only half a century later and were far from perfect either. It is my belief that it is still impossible to implement the Nyquist, Nyquist theorem perfectly. And I'm not alone. Depending on who you ask, 192 kHz or 384 kHz sampling makes a decent digital reconstruction filter possible and thus very good digital to analog conversion. Others say that far more computational power is needed to construct a perfect reconstruction filter. I believe that on the analog to digital side things are slightly less critical. MQA is introduced very recently and is a way to store high res music in less space without quality getting lost. 
It also protects the file integrity and corrects timing errors that occurs during analog to digital and digital to analog conversion. See my videos on how MQA works. The link appears in the right top corner now. For as far as I can tell now, and January 2016, it is a very good way to store high res files. The same thing applies as to the other high res files. It's just a container. If the studio decides to fill it with junk, it will play back the junk with high precision, but it will remain junk. MQA files can be stored in any file mo format that can store uncompressed PCM audio, so WAV, Apple Lossless, FLAC and AIF file formats. High res is no guarantee of a good sound. High res is the container as a tin can is a container for food. It is a very reliable form of conserving food, making transport and storing far less critical. But it won't improve the food. If you put in low quality food, the best you can get out is low quality food. I won't even mention what happens when the food processing was not done properly. The same goes for high res music containers. They can contain very high quality recordings, but also very poor quality recordings. I'll end with an old joke that puts it in perspective. After long years, John bumped into Paul again and asked him how, how he was doing. Paul told he had bought a container of peaches for only 90 euros a grass. John asked him to sell him a pallet and they agreed on the price. A week later they met again. John was rather cross and said to Paul, your peaches were inedible. What a junk. Sure, said Paul, but they were for business, not for eating. So you see. Every market knows its crooks and I will try to keep you up to date. So follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account to stay informed. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You'll find the information below this video on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on thehbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.